And uh, but we're gonna do a tune here from uh, probably the most famous uh, of all the blues guys, uh, a guy uh, named Robert Johnson. Although, although his name on his birth certificate is Robert Spencer. Uh, you know, he was uh, for for many many years. Uh, uh, a figure shrouded in mystery. Well, a lot more has been found out about the guy, and it's it's pretty interesting. Of course, I mean the thing that everybody knew that he made he, he recorded 29 sides and then in, in two different sessions in 1936 in a hotel room in San Antonio, Texas, and then his last session was in the Gunter Hotel in Dallas, Texas, uh, in November of 1937, and he recorded just a handful of songs. But he is, and, and never the, the most records he ever sold while he was alive was. Uh, I think about 5,000, never really achieved any sort of success as, a, as an artist. But has, his legacy has, uh, has grown and grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. And he is, uh, now there's this one that I've got a bit of a rant about this. I, uh, you know, they've got this whole thing, his, uh, his Faustian legend, the, the Faustian myth, the uh, selling his soul to the devil, okay? Now, I met Johnny Shines, who was a good friend of Robert's. Met him in Hughes, he, they, they met in Hughes, Arkansas when, when Johnny was 17, and Robert would have been about 22, and he went out following him around and humbled him a lot. Now, Robert was a guy who we found out later on, if you see, uh, when he signed his birth certificate, this guy had been to school. He'd gone to school in Memphis for about five years as a little kid. He'd been sent there. and. Uh, he, and when he got back down to work on that farm work down in Mississippi, he just said, you know, his musical talent said, no, man, I'm not doing this. This is this hard work. I'm going out to be a, a musicianer, as he used to call themselves. And, and now he was well known. I mean, like, we, we know him for these blues records, but Johnny Shines talks about how, you know, they would go to these little country towns and they'd play at a white barber shop and they would play. And he said he had never heard anybody play country and western do that. Jimmy Rogers, T for Texas, and all that stuff better than Robert Johnson. He could play jazz, he could, he could play don't or anything. And, and this is the thing he did. And so many of his records were somewhat derivative songs, but he brought all these styles together and left us with a really incredible uh, legacy of music. Now the story of, of him selling his soul to the devil, this is something that incensed Johnny Shines. And it really made me wonder. He, he said, well, how come? And you gotta remember the time and place that Johnny told me this. He says, how come a young Negro couldn't just have this much talent and this much drive to go out and learn this stuff himself. Huh. Steve Dawson here didn't have to sell his soul to the devil learn to play the guitar like that. No, he worked his ass off. <laughs> and this was the thing that Johnny said. This was the point he was making. Said, How come they had, and it was, you know, nobody ever said anything about his selling his soul to the devil until Columbia Records tried to, in 1961, put out King of the Delta Blues. And there's a couple songs on there with the mention of the devil, and of course, the devil and Daniel Webster, Tom Devil and the Walk, the devil and Tom Walker, uh, all throughout history, you know, the, the Faust legend. But don't you find it more compelling, I do, to think that this young kid, born in a, in a, in a, out of wedlock on a uh, dirt cotton farm in southern Mississippi in 1911, could have that much talent just to put this together by himself. I find that a much more compelling story. Yeah. Well, this is a Robert Johnson tune, and probably uh, it was the B-side of the only record that, that, that really had many sales. This was the B-side of the Terraplane Blues. And this was probably the only re recorded stuff that, that that record was probably the only record that Robert ever heard of himself before he died. Now, he did die a terrible death in a terrible way. And when the devil comes into the business is when he started messing around with somebody else's wife. <laughs> the, the devil's going to show up. <laughs> okay. This one's called The Last Fair Deal. I think it goes like that. Yeah. 